Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to be looking at a Marantz which is a PM5004 audio amplifier. So in terms of specifications, um, not a bad spec, spec on this amplifier, so in terms of RMS power output, so this will be a simultaneous drive of both channels and that's the frequency range of 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. So you'd be looking at 35 watts per channel into 8 ohms or if you had a 4 ohm speaker load on there then that could deliver up to 45 watts as well then. And then in terms of inputs you have the ability to connect the turntable directly so that is a moving magnet type and your input range there is 2.2 millivolts so at 47 kilo ohms in terms of input impedance and then it also supports a CD input tuner aux DVD and then you also have a recorder output which will provide 200 millivolts into a 20 kilogram, uh, 20k load directly and fully uh, remote control as well. I do see a number of these amplifiers in the workshop and I do like working on them. I think cosmetically they, they look pretty good, you know, and then uh, this can also be available, you know, in a silver version as well. Um, in terms of most common faults, the most common fault that you see with the uh, PM5004, and this could also apply to the 6000 series as well, is failure of the volume control potentiometer. And you tend to know if that's the issue, where you have maybe a loss of audio on one of the channels, and then if you, for example, operate the direct mode switch on the front to switch out the tone circuit, if you still have a loss of audio, then you'll probably need to get your scope out or maybe an audio signal tracer and then just trace um, onto the volume control board and verify that there is no issue there. Uh, I don't know why. You, you, I've probably seen more of these um, in the workshop for that particular fault. Maybe there was a manufacturing issue attributed. The good thing is the volume control potentiometer is still available and you can buy it. It's a motorized device, so you don't have to go out there just trying to source a, a generic replacement but you can see in the video what I'm showing you is the board itself so it plugs directly into the rear of the microprocessor stroke uh, tone board and it's just held in place via two, two fixing screws so if you remove the volume control knob you'll see the two screws and then once you undo them you can literally unplug the volume control board spin it over and then desolder if you then need to replace it so what was the issue with this amp? Well, if you selected the tone circuits in circuit, what you had was no audio output on the left channel at all. But if you selected uh, the tone circuits out of circuit, then no problem. You had audio output on both channels, and then I could select any input. Everything was all good. So what that indicated to me, or pointed to, that you had an issue with potentially one of the user controls on the on, on the tone board and the first place I'm going to look for based on experience is the potentiometer which would be associated then with the balance control so when you look at the video there's quite a bit of a strip down that you have to do to get access to that front panel board so once you remove the front bezel which contains the board as well you have multiple fixing screws at the rear and of course is after you've unplugged the volume control board and then you'll also need to release the locking nut which holds in place the encoder which is used for the input selection and then once you've removed that you will then be able to well you've also got to unscrew the fixing screws for the power uh, plug as well and then you also see the headphone socket once you've done all of that then you can literally pull away the board and as you can see for test purposes in the video I can leave that board in place. Just be a little bit careful. Make sure you're not going to short anything out you know, during testing, which would touch the metal chassis. Just a little bit of caution there. And then what I can then do is I can use the service manual, again, which is available and then can be downloaded. And I also show it in the um, repair video as well. So I show you the circuit diagram, but we'll come back to that in a moment. And then what I did was I just followed the service manual schematic and then I'm then checking the signal input as it comes into the balance control and quite quickly I could identify that it was entering the balance control potentiometer but it was not exiting. 
So here you have to desolder the balance control and then I'm able to take it apart. And you can see in the video, it's, it's very easy. You can literally see the carbon tracks. Um, it's just a case of using a multimeter and then one of the carbon tracks, of course, associated with the left channel was open circuit. So nothing you can do there, you know, it has to, has to be replaced. So that type of potentiometer that you see, um, it's, it's probably a little bit difficult to source, to be honest, because it's an MN series for balance control. And uh, trying to source it is probably not the easiest. Well, you know, I have a couple of them in stock, not huge numbers. But once the volume, oh sorry, once the balance control potentiometer was replaced, it was a simple matter then of retesting it. And sure enough, I had audio then on both channels, left and right, and it was fine, you know, either from a direct mode or when the tone can circuits were then selected as well. What I also did, and this is very, very common, I didn't just stop, you know, just at the balance control potentiometer. What I did also was I just removed the other user controls. So I was looking at the treble control and then also the base control potentiometers. And what I've done there is I've just taken them apart. I've then cleaned them with deoxy, but at the same time, I've also cleaned the contacts, which is the wiper part, to make sure that, you know, the oxide, which is on the uh, metal part of the the wiper just to get rid of all of that right i don't want anything on there which would cause intermittent connections and then you'll also see in the video as well what i've i've done is i also uh, worked on the encoder so this is the input selection encoder so again you can desolder it from the board very very easy to do and then what i've then done is i've just removed all of that heavy grease which just solidifies and then you get this intermittent issue with channel hopping where it will change channel randomly and i spoke about this in other previous audio blogs as well so just remove all of that grease and then you can then reapply some deoxic grease then to ensure you get a smooth contact but you know you may also need to use the fiberglass pencil to get rid of the um the oxidization on the metal contacts as well then and then in the video as well, what I also show is a overview just of the circuit associated with the balance control potentiometer. So the balance control potentiometer has a value of 20k and it's an MN type being balance and it's a dual gang pot. Now, when you select on this amplifier source direct mode from the front, what it does is it operates relay RY51. And then when you look at the circuit diagram, what you can see is you have a common contact and a normally open and then a normally closed. So when you operate source direct, what will happen is the relay will energize and then the audio then will pass directly through the contacts then and then feed directly into the other stages of the amp, i.e. the power amp, etc. And then it's, it's really straightforward, you know, to try and find these sorts of faults because when you have a direct mode, what you have, you have right, right channel out and left channel out. And it's merely a case then that it just passes via two capacitors, one for each channel. So there's C520 and then you have C519 and these are 10 microfarad uh, 60 volts, I think they are, 50 volts. And they pass through. So you can just literally go onto either side of the capacitor uh, and then you can just verify that you've got audio on there. And I did have no problem. So I knew there wasn't any problem associated either with RY51. And then when the source direct mode is not operated, then the relay will then de-energize. And then what happens then is I'm pulling in of the tone control circuits and you have the uh, balance control potentiometer. So as soon as I was tracking the left channel, from the balance control potentiometer and again you can get access from the front board straight away you could see the signal coming in but nothing on the uh, wiper part coming out then so not a complex repair i would say but you know you can take what uh, what i've sort of provided here you know to and apply that then to any of the other uh, Marantz series amplifiers if it's a pm series five or six thousand just be aware as i said you could have an issue with the volume control potentiometer, one of the carbon tracks or one of the tracks going up in circuit, not uncommon. Or this issue here. This is probably out of the amplifiers that come through the workshop in the last couple of years. This is probably about the third or fourth um, 
of this series amplifier where I've had an issue with the balance control potentiometer just failing open circuit then. Um, and I said on a previous repair tutorial, if you're sort of looking for some of these components and you type in the part, I'm like, so this one would have 203 MN, you know, just click on Google Images because then you literally have, you'll have hundreds of images which will then come up and it's far easier trying to look at an image and then say, okay, that's definitely the, the, the part that I need. And then when you click onto it, it'll take you to the website. Sometimes the parts are obsolete, but in most cases you should be able to... Uh, source then a replacement and then uh, get the amplifier up and running then all right so that sort of brings us to this uh, brief repair overview tutorial and i thank you again for stopping by and i uh, look forward to uh, you listening to uh, more of these uh, next week there's more amplifiers coming in of course so uh, what do we have on the deck so we got some more r cams coming in no surprise there and there's also uh, a very old uh, Arkham Alpha amplifier which will come, be coming in. And also a Pioneer A10. So there's quite a lot of repair overview. We backdrop descriptions on the channel. But I will do a repair tutorial for that series amplifier. Again providing some insight because you can apply it to the A10, uh, A20 and A30. Common faults which occur. Um, we'll see what the issue is with that amplifier when it then comes through. And as always, I wish you all the best and thank you very much until the next time. Bye bye.